My first book was published in 1989, A Time to Kill, and when it came out, it didn't sell. I was very busy then as a lawyer, and I, I told myself, I'm gonna write one more book. And when I was in law school, I had a friend who was a top student, and this guy was uh, heavily recruited. And he would go off to visit law firms, and he came back from a trip, and he said, you know, I, I didn't really feel good about that firm. I got the impression that uh, once you join the firm, you never leave. And you know, like it's owned by the mafia or something. Well, that was 10 years earlier, but the idea stuck. We both defend criminals, Brad. The difference is, <laughs> I'll admit it to anyone. You won't even admit it to yourself. And so I pitched it to my agent in New York. I said, OK, here's the idea. Young, hotshot law student can go to work anywhere. He picks a small firm. And once he goes there, he can't leave. It's secretly owned by the mafia, and nobody ever gets out. And he went nuts over it. Looking back when I was writing in longhand, uh, in courtrooms or early in the morning, late at night at the office, whenever I could write, I believed in the story and I, I wanted to keep the tension going and it, it worked. How far has he gotten? Not that far. Let's be perfectly clear. If Mitch McDare ever finds the truth in this case, everyone in this room is going to prison. I sent the book to New York to my agent and nothing happened. Publishers didn't want to publish it. Somebody in a copy room in New York ran a bootleg copy of the manuscript, 500 pages, and probably sold it to a scout. And the bootleg copy popped up in Hollywood, and this guy got it. And he made about 25 copies of it, claimed to represent me, and sent it to all the big movie houses. I knew nothing about it. And the phone was ringing, and it was my agent in New York. And he said, we sold the film much to the firm, to Paramount Pictures. And I said, okay, just for fun, how much money did we get? He said, $600,000. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. After the movie deal, suddenly all the publishers wanted the book. So we had another auction, and David Gernert, who is my agent now, he was my editor, he bought the book for Doubleday. And then it was uh, fascinating to watch the book just kind of march around the world, language by language. I thought things had pretty much died down in the past uh, several years with the firm. And then Luke Ryder shows up, you know, with this idea for a TV show. The show picks up about 10 years after the events of what people know of as the firm. Mitch and his family ended up having to go into witness protection. They have decided after 10 years that they are safe and that they can come out. My family wants his name back. All my daughter's ever known is running. It's over. We see the McDear family when they try to move on with their lives, only to find out that the past is not quite done with them, and there's all sorts of threats uh, and dangers out there in the future that they need to be worried about. So what? So we just give up? Give up? No, I don't want to give up. I want to grind those smug sons of bitches into ground glass. Then let's do it. I can't wait to sit down the first night. I want to be sitting in the den and watching the show. That's going to be a very proud moment. Abby McDear. Abby. It's happening again.